This is Toronto. This is also Toronto. Yep. And this. And this too. Also this. You gotta love a place that has a left-handed day. But not this. This would be Niagara Falls. Hello and welcome to another episode in On My Arty Bookshelf, my year-long exploration of the many many art books that I have. This episode's a little bit different. At the end of May, my, my daughters and I spent a few days in Toronto, Canada's largest city. It is a decidedly urban place, but despite that, we, we did manage to do a th few things outside of the city. And let me tell you about it. It was really a no-brainer to choose this first book as my inspiration, Urban Watercolor Sketching, because I always take a sketchbook with me whenever I travel, and this time was no different. I really like this book. I really like the sketchy, loose style that the, the illustrator has, and it suits the way that I do my sketches really well. And I paired that book with this one, this, uh, this magazine about art journaling. And art journaling is a practice where people combine images and words and paint and paper and create quite unique pieces of art. And as I was flipping through the book trying to think of how I was going to use this as an inspiration, I noticed all the borders that many of the pieces have quite elaborate borders and I thought okay words, images and borders that is going to be my inspiration for the sketch that I do for my 52 things this week. And here's my journal, the obligatory airport sketch that I always do while I'm waiting for my flights. Soon after I started doing this urban sketching, I started drawing the views from every place that I stay at when I travel. And this is the view from the hotel that we stayed at with a few of the things that we purchased at a place called Italy, an Italian themed eatery. Get it? Italy, Italy, eatery. And here is the actual view from our hotel there. So I grabbed a couple of scrap pieces of paper while we were at Italy and a piece of stationery from our hotel to create the border for my contribution to my year-long project. Just by ripping these pieces up quite randomly and not really planning things too much in advance. And then the next day, we headed off to a place called the Toronto Islands. Now, I know the Toronto Islands from one of Margaret Atwood's earlier novels. Before she started writing her speculative fiction, she, a lot of her novels were about people who lived in Toronto. And one of them... The Robber Bride was set in part on the Toronto Islands. Now this is about a 20 minute ferry ride from downtown Toronto, but it's really like going back in time. It reminded me a lot of some of the parks that my family used to visit when I was a little girl back in the 60s and 70s. There are people who live on these islands, but they do not have any vehicles, cars, are not allowed on the islands. They can ride bikes and walk, and it is quite a tranquil and peaceful place, just 20 minutes from downtown. I started my sketch, my watercolor urban sketch, while we were waiting for the ferry to head over there. This was one of the other people who was waiting there as well. And I always start off my sketch with pen work, and then I go into the watercolors that I carry in my little tin here, and this is where I ran into a bit of a problem. The paper was definitely not suitable for watercolor paint. No, no worries, it's not really a big deal though. And I just carried on and let it be as it was. I added a bit more to my sketch while we were waiting for our lunch with a view of the downtown Toronto skyline when lunch arrived. Another place that we visited that has a place in some of Atwood's novels is the Royal Ontario Museum. One of her early novels, Life Before Man, one of the main characters, works in the paleontology department of the museum. And really, you gotta love the name of, <laughs> of this exhibit here. And one of the really astounding things that they have here, this rock that I'm petting, is actually the earliest evidence of life on Earth, four billion years old. 
We also visited the Bata Shoe Museum where they had a floral shoe exhibit. Unfortunately, I would say that this was probably the most interesting exhibit at the museum. If you don't live in Canada, you might not know that in Canada, it's pretty typical for people to take their shoes off when they visit somebody's homes. And if you're at a party, you often will find a major pile of shoes at the door, much like this one. Yeah, I had their floral flower exhibit was not that exciting and I would have to say that this exhibit at the Fluvog store was a much more fun <laughs> example of floral footwear than the one at the actual museum. And if you don't know Fluvog shoes, I would encourage you to look them up online. They make the most quirky and unusual shoes. I did do a few sketches at the museum of some of the footwear, but my daughters were setting quite a blistering pace and I didn't manage to finish them. So I added in some of the shadows and highlights after I got home. I'm using my secret tool to bring back some of the highlights. It's a white jelly roll gel pen. And here is how my sketch looks after I added the highlights here. And here's another view from before. And it just goes to show you that not all sketches look beautiful all the way through. Now this next sketch deserves some explanation. In the basement of our hotel there was a rather unusual restaurant called Au Noir. Now Au Noir is a restaurant where you dine in complete darkness. Of course we had to try it out, it was right there. So I didn't actually do the sketch in the restaurant. I did it from memory with my eyes closed off my experience of sitting and eating in the darkness. The food tasted quite good. The thing that I did notice about the place was that I was very aware of the conversations that were going on around me. And I also felt like people seemed to be far less inhibited and quite loud and boisterous, except the couple that were sitting off to one side, who I think were on a first date. And I don't know if you've ever been to one of these restaurants, but if you have, let me know what you thought. And this one, while my, my daughter was telling, uh, telling me about the, her planned itinerary for the day, I decided to write it down. So here are some of the things we did that day. We visited a few different public libraries in Toronto. This one had this great card catalog. Don't you love them? It also had a fantastic collection of vintage children's books. And I am a huge fan of children's books. Here's an example. It's not that old. It's from 1981. Oh, and then we also visited the Toronto Reference Library. Look at this view from up on one of the higher floors. Somebody really gave that a lot of thoughts. There was also this great exhibit going on at that library of old street posters, handmade street posters, including this fun left-handed day poster. And in contrast, outside, post no bills. Standing outside the art gallery, listening to the Trash Panda Brass Band. I also didn't get a chance to finish that sketch, so worked on it when I got home. Uh, my daughter was quite taken with the selection of soft drinks at one of the places that we stopped for lunch. And then another museum that we visited while we were in Toronto was called the Textile Museum of Canada, and I really enjoyed this museum. This exhibit is all made from waste products. This beautiful piece with the woman in it, and these pieces as well, are all made from reclaimed black plastic garbage bags that have been cleaned and spun into yarn and then used to make lace. And it was a really very interesting exhibit and of course right up my alley using waste to create such beautiful things. Another exhibit they had called Gathering Examine Migration and Movements in Human Condition in Different Parts of the World as Part of Daily Life. It was, I also found this one to be really moving and interesting. The pieces were very, all, all textiles of course, <laughs> and they were all, I felt, quite moving and interesting to look at and really quite well done. There's this tapestry here showing scenes of everyday life and this rug that at first glance looks like a typical 
Persian style rug that you might see, but if you take a closer look, the imagery in it is not at all typical, but really speaks to many of the things that are going on in our world today, doesn't it? And there's this really interesting bright orange banner here with, with words to consider and ponder and yeah, I really enjoyed this museum a lot. Another thing that we did while we were there is we took the GO train to Niagara Falls. But I had not anticipated how difficult it would be to sketch on a train. And Niagara Falls are indeed quite spectacular. They're every bit as good as you imagine. And man, do you get wet. Even standing far away from the falls, you get wet from the spray. But after you've looked at the falls, what else is there to do? It turns out that there is this crazy area filled with all kinds of amusements and things to separate you from your money. And we chose to go into Ripley's Believe It or Not. And if you don't know what Ripley's Believe It or Not is, one of my daughters described it as what you wish every museum was. It is filled with weird oddities. That's all I can call them. Unusual, peculiar things, all kinds, and they are everywhere. It is sensory overload. My other daughter... <laughs> had had enough. She had had enough of Niagara Falls after an hour in this place. It was stimulation overload and actually it was, there were things going on all over the place and I didn't notice how noisy it was until I looked at this video footage and it was, there were sounds coming from every direction. There was ambient noise, there were people screaming, including me at one point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there was a lot going on there. There are a few pieces of art here made from garbage and waste materials, including this portrait of Anna Nicole Smith made from garbage, leftover things. And how could I not include this Sri Lankan mask, the Silanese mask? This is not an exhibit. This is an actual bathroom, but we have a family story about a bathroom exhibit in a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. And if you ask me about it, I might tell you one day. And then our time in Toronto was over and we played cards with our Fluvog deck of cards on the train and ate bagels that we bought in Toronto. But wait, before I left, on my last day in Toronto, I noticed this thing hanging on a fence. So I picked it up, and if you want to know what I did with it, you'll have to wait for the Montreal episode. Thanks so much for watching. It's great to see you here, and I hope to see you again soon. And I will just leave you with a flip through of some of the other pages from my travel journal. Bye for now. See you again soon.